it is God's will to set up his own kingdom and dominance. You see, when a person is praying and they're thinking of themselves, they will never receive anything. You see, when you're praying and say, Father, I am praying. Um, it's like in the days of Israel when they were in Egypt. Can you imagine if every individual would go before the Lord and say, Father, I am praying that you take me out of uh, Egypt. God will never do it because God wanted the whole nation to come out, not one person. Did you hear that? Yes. God did not have an individual plan. There was a nation. So when you are praying, Father, I want deliverance to happen to me. God is not looking at you. God is looking at a huge plan. Okay, you are delivered. So what? After receiving your healing and there are people who are very healthy. They are not even believers. They are not even Christians. They are 80 years right now. They are healthy. The question is, and so that you are healed and delivered. So why do you want to be delivered? I want to be rich. And there are people rich billionaires right now. They are not even Christians. What would be the difference between you and them? They are even using their money to attack the gospel. In fact, you think I've spent so much giving in the church. There are people right now, they have spent so much more than you. Sponsoring to bring this ministry down. So never think you need to have to start developing a kingdom mindset. To say God is not just going to make me rich just like that. There is a, a mandate. Oh my God, I'm talking to somebody, right? Oh yes, oh yes. So when a person is talking about, um, a, you, know, you, know, you know, it looks like you've got a valid reason, a proper reason you want to be healed. Like, um, uh, Papa, I want to be healed. The question is, why when you are healed? So what happens? When you are made whole, so what takes place? Read the Bible. What was happening? The Bible says, and the man who Jesus had cast out a region, the Bible says he went about in all places, in all cities, preaching about Jesus. When the man was delivered, look about the, read about the women. Susanna. Mary, the Bible says, and these women who Jesus had cast out evils, he had removed demons, they began to serve the Lord Jesus with their substance. Oh, yes. So the reason why you, 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 you need to be set free, it's not just because you deserve it, but God has a universal plan. God is looking at what he wants to do. Clap hands for Jesus. Now, whenever we are dealing with the things of the Spirit, we are dealing with one nation, the nation of God. Now, did you hear that? Yes. We are dealing with what? The nation, the nation of God. There is one nation of God. There are not two. There's only one nation. There's one plan. When God is looking at the whole universe, one nation. That's why Israel represents the whole universe. The whole Christianity is represented by Israel. That's why it's very, very, very dangerous for a Christian to have hatred against Israel. It's important for a Christian to start understanding why am I a Christian? Why am I called and why am I here? Why am I into this? There is one nation that God is looking for. One, it is the will of the Lord from the beginning of the universe to have a nation. To establish one nation on earth. And I will tell you, in those days, God had different plans how to establish a nation. One nation. And in those days, God used different methods. 
but he prophesied it before even a man was created. In Genesis 1 verse 26, all right, in Genesis 1 verse 26, the Bible says that God said, man must have dominance. He must have rule, authority, power. He must rule the earth. So we are not dealing with what right now is trying to know. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish. Which fish? The fish of the sea and over the fall of the air and over the ghetto and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So when you're sitting there, it's not that like God is trying to do it now. It has always been his will oh, yes. that his nation yes. must have dominion oh, yes. over all spheres of life. Man. Clap hands for Jesus. Now, I will, I will show you. In my ministry, when I was starting ministry, God told me one, one thing. He said, now I'm sending you to speak to individuals. Mm. Are you hearing this? He said, I'm sending you to individuals. So when I was doing prophecy, when I'm prophesying, I would even follow people and, and to their nations and talk to, to individuals. And God said, in the next phase of your life, I want to deal with the nations. And, and he said, I'm going to bring in prophets. Yes. There'll be seven areas of dominance. Oh, yes. And I want you to, to walk with these seven groups. And I will conquer the earth. And God is going to establish his throne. And establish Jesus as a ruler of his nation before his return. Now, I want to show you the prophetic thing that God did. So God said, I'll put up seven mountains. And these seven mountains, they'll conquer the spirit of Babylon. You hear that? Jesus. These seven areas will conquer the spirit of Babylon. And God told me how. Oh. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to speak to you right now. And, and they will not make sense. But after I read the scriptures for you. You're going to see these things making sense. As I told you, that God said to me, I'm going to raise up different prophets. Uh, did you hear that? I'm going to raise up different prophets. Remember when Elijah, when Elijah went before the Lord and he said, God, all prophets have been killed. Only I remain. God said, wait, you are not the only one remaining. There are 7,000 prophets in the same country where you are. They were not prophets on the pulpit. But there were different prophets in different areas. Amen. Oh, yes. Did you hear that? Oh, yes. Let me tell you, in the Bible, it's not all. When you think of a prophet, you think of a prophet who was holding a microphone and he was prophesying. No. There are other prophets who were political prophets. Yes. For example, Joseph was a financial prophet. He was also a political prophet. And you read of Joseph helping his, his family. The Bible says even his birth. The Bible says the birth of Joseph took away the reproach of the mother. The boy was born like this. First thing he inherited was a gown of his father. It was a very expensive gown the father gave him. The boy began to attract money when he was very young. To a level where the brothers were so jealous of him and said, no, let's just kill this boy. But they didn't understand that he was a financial prophet. He was a political prophet. They sold the boy. And the boy, after selling him, he landed himself in the corridors of power. He was in the house of Potiphar. Oh, yes. There are people right now, whatever they are passing through, the problems they are passing through, will just take them into the corridors of power. Oh, yes, daddy. And the boy was in Potiphar's house for an assignment. And then, in the same house, they put him in jail. That was all God's plan. It was a script. Somebody said it was a script. I'm telling you. It was a script. You know when I see some people crying? Some of the things you are passing through is a script. Clap hands for Jesus. The boy goes like this. In the prison. He goes in the prison like this. Right there in the prison. He begins to interpret dreams. 
Somebody say financial prophet. Financial prophet. There is nowhere where you see Joseph giving prophecies to people. You know, never. The guy was just, you know, a solution so far. The Bible says right there, he began to interpret things. What will happen? How will they happen? Then the king called him. He said, you know, I want you to come and help me. Come out of the prison. Come and help my government. The Bible says he helped the, 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 he helped fellow to a level whereby the financial system changed completely. Oh, yes. The whole country of, of Egypt, the Bible says there was, there was hunger. But everyone around the area, they were coming to Egypt looking for food. Including the brothers who went to Egypt looking for food. Oh, yes. The financial system was different. Yes. The man began to bring in solutions. Oh, wow. He was a financial prophet. Oh, yes. He began to help the country to a level where the people, the Bible said that his family members, they were all promoted. Oh, yes. The king said, um, um, tell me, uh, who do you want promotion? The Bible said they were in charge of livestock. They took over agriculture sectors. I am a soko paradias. Wow. It is a moment now where God is going to raise up people in oh, the kingdom. Yes. They will be all over in agriculture. Oh, yes. They will take over an I am a setereba shanta kapaya. They will take over. They will take over the industry. My God. And the Bible says, and the livestock. It says, and the whole livestock system. And then the Bible says, and the, the people of Israel, they took over the, the, by the help of Joseph, they took over the land. There was property management. They went to real estate. They took over real estate. Until today, main countries, main countries you know, check who controls the real estate. The Jews, the Israelites. It is because of Joseph until today. He left a legacy for his family. Give the Lord a mighty hand of praise. And God told me, he said, right now, I want to establish my kingdom. I will raise up people. I will raise up people in my kingdom. I will raise up people who will take over agriculture. Who will take over the land. They will be in land management. They will take over the real estate. They will take over. They will be financial prophets. They will come out and they will rise. And they will invade. I receive. Clap hands for Jesus. Am I speaking to you or you are speaking to me? Or somebody is speaking to somebody or you are listening to this message. This is what God says. I want you to hear it. This is not a preaching. Thy says the Lord. The Lord is speaking. You better hear it and listen and take it and run with it. And these prophets will rise. They'll come in real estate. They'll, come, they'll control. They'll be everywhere. They'll be financial. They'll take over. You see, Solomon, Solomon. Solomon was not a prophet on the pulpit. He was a financial prophet. He used his finances to, to build the temple, to build the church. How many here they are interested in being in what God wants to be done? Okay, because you see, as I'm preaching to you right now, I want you to understand that God is not going to put you in agriculture because uh, it's you. No. There is a nation of God. Let me just show you this before we go. Let's go to 1 Kings chapter 6 from verse 21 to 32. Okay? 1 Kings chapter 6 verse 21 to 22. The Bible says, so Solomon overlaid the house. It says, with pure gold. What are you talking about? He said, the house of God. Can you imagine? He used not, 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 not just some of the God, so pure. Financial prophets, when they came into the scene. The Bible says Solomon, he did. He said, the whole house of the Lord, the whole temple, the whole church, he put pure God. And he made a petition by the chains of God before the oracle. And he overlaid it with God. Verse 22. Hi, yeah, 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 yeah. And the whole house, he laid it, overlaid it with God. <gasps> you enter in the temple like this. Everything was God. He said, even the partition and the whole house overlaid with God until he had finished all the house. Also, the whole altar that was by the oracle, he overlaid with God. You see this altar that I'm standing right now. He said, he came and put God everywhere. Pure God. A 
a financial prophet was on the scene. Somebody say, I connect. Financial prophet. He came and said, what's happening in the temple? He built it himself. Put God everywhere. Oh, yes. There is no way you hear, and, and, and Solomon was giving a prophecy to a certain woman. No. He was a prophet, but a financial prophet. Major. He was also a political prophet. So, if you think, ah, Papa, hallelujah, I gave uh, 5,000. And you think you did too much. Go and ask Solomon. Go and ask. You think you've done so much. Like, I gave 5,000. Hallelujah. They are you are wasting time. God wants to raise financial prophets. And if you are among these financial prophets, God is going to raise. Hayama Sokotoros. Go into scripture. Check that. Check that. Check that. Just sit there a little bit. He says, he says what? He says what? He says, and the whole house was valid with God until he had finished all the house. Also the whole altar that was by the oracle, he overlaid with God. I 23. And within the oracle, he made two cherubims of olive tree and each 10 cubits high. Now, then the Bible says, and the five cubits was one wing of the cherub, and five cubits the other wing of the cherub from the utmost part of the wing unto the utmost part of other were 10 cubits. You see, he made, you see, a, repre- a representation of an angel, like, you know, stretching their wings like this, of God, like this, facing each other in the temple. Verse 25. And the other cherub was 10 cubits. Both the cherubims were of one measure and one size. The height of one cherub was 10 cubits. <laughs> and so was, was eight of the other cherub. Now, and he set the cherubims within the inner house, and they stretched forth the wings of the cherubims, so that the wing of the other touched the other wall, and the other wing or the other cherub touched the other wall, and their wings touched one another in the midst of the house. Hey, can you imagine, imagine God making a statue like this of God? Facing each other like angels to a level where only one wing goes to the other wall, and the other wing goes to the other wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey. And he overlaid the cherubims with God. Verse 28. And he overlaid the cherubims with God. And he caved all the walls of the house round about with caved figures of cherubims and palm trees and open flowers within and without. And the floor of the house of overlaid with God, within and without. Can you imagine the whole floor? You talk about our papa. Floor. You see floor? Oh, yes. The old, the old church. Gold. Floor. The whole floor. And then you are dealing now. Papa, I gave too much. We have not seen anything what God is about to do. He's about to restore his kingdom. He's about to take his kingdom to another dimension. It didn't really happen with Solomon. Solomon was a nobody. Let me tell you something. If you don't understand this, David was a man of God who went through so many battles than any other king in Israel. And Solomon, the Bible says, in the days of Solomon, there was no war. Solomon took over the kingdom and finished the kingdom without war. People were coming to him to say, Solomon, we don't want to fight with you. We brought you God. Because he was a financial prophet. David was not. David had a different mission. That's why I am not a financial prophet. I have got a different mission. But within the church, God is going to raise up some certain people who are watching me now, some are here, who will act, who will stand up. And they will have so much worth. My mandate is to raise those ones. The whole universe. To pray for people. 
Kaya basote ke parados. I want you to go back to, to uh, verse 22, what I was reading, okay? It says what? It says, so he finished overlaying the entire temple with God, including the altar that belonged to the most holy place. Continue from there. Verse 23, it says what? Verse number 23. He made two cherubims of wild, wild olives wood, each 15 feet tall. And place them in the inner sanctuary. The wingspan of each of the cherubim was 15 feet, each wing being seven and a half feet long. The two cherubims were identical in shape and size, each was 15 feet tall. He placed them inside by side, mm. he placed them side by side in the inner sanctuary of the temple. Their outspread wings reached from wall to wall, while their inner wings touched at the center of the room. He overlaid the two cherubims with gold. He decorated all the walls of the inner sanctuary and the main room with cavings of cherubims, palm trees, and open flowers. He overlaid the floor in the both rooms with gold. For the entrance to the inner sanctuary, he made double doors of wild olives wood with five-sided door posts. These double posts were decorated with carvings of cherubims, palm trees, and open flowers. The doors, including the decorations of cherubims and palm trees, were overlaid with the gold. Now, I just want to say this. Wow. Can you imagine wow. you being wow. in a such type of a church? Ah. Even if you don't see in the spirit, your eyes will just open. Oh, yes. A financial prophet. Can you imagine? And we are dealing with, you see, because the church... Dynamic insight. God said the church is sleeping. God told me, he said the church mm. is sleeping. And I will show you how, just mm. now. I will show you a scripture. Mm. Mm. You know, when God began to reveal these things to me... Yes, sir. You know, and he was speaking to me directly. And when he began to use the scripture speaking to me, oh my God, I was, you know, overwhelmed. He said, this is the scripture. He, you know, and I was just said, oh my God. You know, it puzzled me. Now, I want to show you something. Because people until today in the church, people are still thinking of me. Okay? People are still thinking of me. They're not having the nation of God. God's will is to establish a nation. And in Genesis 1, verse 26 to 28, God says, I will make a man and I want him to have dominion. He says, over the earth. So God has always had that until man rebelled. When man rebelled, a man became in independent. It was now about him and his family and his kids. But God still continued the establishment of his kingdom. He said, all right, I know man has done something wrong. Wow. He said, right now, Abel. Wow. He said, continue. He said, any person who would touch Abel, I'll have issues with that person. God protected him. It is from Abel, we hear all these men of God coming out from his, from his seed. Oh, yeah. are, you, are, you, are you there, right? Yeah. Now, now, now you, you see Lot coming from Abel. All right, he was a descendant of all these great people here. Enoch comes from there, and you hear the whole story. But God still said, Now Abraham comes from there. But God says, All right, now I must establish my country, I must establish my nation. Then Abraham he has a child, and he calls him Isaac. And God says, Right, this is the moment. And Isaac comes out with the two children. And God says, No, from these two children, I'll make a nation. And he makes a nation from one. Jacob, and he calls it Israel. Israel. And God, it's not the plan he's doing it. He began it in Genesis. Yes, sir. And then when he saw Israel standing against him, he says, right now I'll establish another nation. My God. And I'll call it Christ. Wow. Then he sends Jesus to establish it. My God. Wow. And Jesus comes, he says, when I go, this nation will be established by the pouring of the Holy Spirit. So there is no country that will say they are a nation 
without sovereignty. There are that people who they remember who fought for the independence of that country. Yes, sir. And in our nation, in our nation, in our Christian nation, <laughs> Jesus fought like for our freedom. He fought for our independence. So we remember the sovereignty of God. My God. Because somebody died. My God. The way you remember in your country, how you celebrate somebody who died for your nation, and you, you say, today is this day. Hallelujah. You remember the, the same way. The same way. Without that, there's no your nation. Wow. The same way you do is the same way we also remember how Jesus died for our nation. My God. So when the devil saw that, ah, God has a plan. God wants to establish a nation. Mm. The devil himself took over the land of Canaan and put up seven mountains. Did you hear that? Yes, sir. Which right now God wants to raise them. To conquer those nations. And those nations which the devil had put have been dominating the earth until today. Seven nations. Okay. Seven mountains. Bring it on. Are you understand what I'm trying to say? Yes, sir. How many nations? Seven. How many mountains? Seven. And now God says, I will raise up seven mountains which will conquer the seven mountains of darkness. And I will show you from the scripture, what are these seven mountains? Okay. Now, if you go in the book of Deuteronomy, uh, chapter 7, verse 1, I want you to see that. Okay, Deuteronomy 7, verse 1, the Bible says 1. When the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land, whether thou goest to possess it, and has cast out many, many nations before thee, the Hittites and the Gigashites. Gigashites and the Amorites and the Canaanites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. Seven nations greater and mightier than thou. Now, I want to just show you this. Go back to the scripture from verse 1. Now, the Bible says, When the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land without goals to possess it, it says, There is a land you must possess it. Because it was possessed by seven nations. The land of God, you must understand what Canaan represents. Yes, sir. Canaan represents God's nation. No, 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 no. I'm trying to talk to somebody who must understand this message. Are you understand what I'm trying to say? The land of Canaan represents what? God's nation. Now, but the God's nation was possessed, was taken mm. by seven nations. Seven and nations. what are these nations? Number one, the, the Bible Hittites. says, they, uh, when in the, before the, the Hittites, number one. I want you to be counting. Number two, the Gigashites. Gigashites. I want you to be counting. Number three. Number three, the Amorites. All right. Number four, the Canaanites. All right. Number five, the Perizzites. All right. Number six, the Hivites. All right. Number seven, the Jebusites. How many? How many? How many nations? Seven uh, nations. Now, when we read in the Greater scripture, and mightier than thou. Now, when you read the scripture, the Bible describes them as seven nations. Now, but when you read and study more in the Bible, the Bible says they were staying in mountains. Uh, I'm trying to talk to somebody, oh, yes. but with the scary part is. These seven nations yes. are greater the and they are mighty than, the than you, than me. And God said, I want you to possess it. I want you to take over. Now, I want you to understand the meaning of the Hittites. God says, you shall take over the Hittites. Okay. Now, I'm trying to talk to somebody right here. Now, you must understand what the meaning of Hittites. Hittites represents something to do with the bad news. Talk to somebody. Whenever you hear Hittites, according to the scriptures, they are a representation of bad news. Bad news. <laughs> and wow. God says, I want you to go and conquer the seven nations. Yes. Now, quickly, I want you to, 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 to write this down, okay? The Hittites represent bad news. Gigashites. You there? Represents pride and manipulation. Amorites represents humanism. Liars. Canaanites represents the love of money. 
or greed. I'm not trying to make them like that. That's what actually they represent. When you read the whole Bible, when you read the scripture, that's what they represent. Okay? Hivites represents compromise or seduction. Parasites represents false worship or idol worship, false worship. Jebusites represents rejection. There are seven mountains, and God says these mountains, they are greater than you. Now, we want to remove where there is, where there is uh, Hittites, Jebusites, Perizzites. We want to remove those names, and we want to put the definitions and the meanings. So God says, you are bound to conquer. I'm about to put definitions of their names. I'm not going to put Hittites, I'm not going to put Amorites, I'm not going to put Canaanites. I'm going to put their meanings. God says, I'm about to make you possess the bad news, the pride, the manipulation. You are bound to conquer humanism or all lies. You are bound to conquer greed or the love of money. You are bound to conquer compromise or seduction. You are bound to conquer false worship or rejection. So right now, what Powerful. God is trying to do, he's trying to do these seven things. Now, you didn't hear me. Powerful. You didn't hear me. What God is trying to do right now. Yes. These are the seven things. But how will God do them? This is what God is going to do. He's going to raise up the seven mountains, which will replace the seven. Which I just told you right now. This seven, the bad news will be replaced with those who come, who rise up. My God. And these ones will be prophets that God is going to raise. And they will be what you call media prophets. These media prophets will bring good news. Right now I am preaching. Because somebody, somebody sponsored what I'm doing right now. You're watching on the TV. The good news is being spread. Because we have taken over the media. And, ah, uh, yeah. Charuski Apanta. Huh. God wants us. He's going to raise up media prophets. The devil, he's raising up the Hittites. Who are always speaking bad news of the prophets. Bad news of the church. Bad news of you. But God is going to replace. He will raise up media. There shall be media prophets. Who shall bring the good news. Thy says the Lord. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on for Jesus. Thy says the Lord. Spoken. So Oracle. when you see the media fighting, rising against the church, yes, sir. it is not just them rising against the church. There is a spirit of the Hittites. They, they have been there. Even the days of Jesus, they rose, the spirit was, was risen up against Jesus. When he performs a miracle, they said, no, he is casting demons by the spirit of um, uh, Jezebel. He says, everything he was doing, he was criticized. It was the spirit of Hittites. Mm. There was a mountain and Jesus came in, in, in Matthew 28. He says, now I am twisting. He says, I'm raising up a church. He said, go and spread the good news. My God. He, in other words, go and replace, take over where the Hittites are. And this is the prophecy in Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 1. That you shall conquer all the seven mountains. He says, I know they are greater than you, but you shall conquer them. This is the season that God is raising the church to conquer the nations, the mountains that they are looking like they are greater. They look like they are greater but we shall conquer the church who we'll conquer the Paya Matera We shall conquer, we shall conquer. The church is conquering. The church is about to conquer. You see, meaning, you see media. The age of the church. All what you are seeing in the media, the church is conquering. They are media prophets, people who stand, media activists, 
some will sponsor the media to sponsor the good news some media houses will rise up some media channels will come out my God it is it is you see so when when you are sitting there and say I want a miracle God is not looking at you mm. this is powerful God is looking at his nation <laughs> So when we are dealing with the prophetic and we have people who don't understand what I'm trying to do, God showed me clear. He said, this is how I'm going to do it. I will do it in this way. And he showed me it. And when he began to show me scriptures, it blew my mind. He said, this is how I'm going to do it. This is how I'm going to raise up the seven. He said, number one, there will be media prophets who shall conquer the Hittites. Bad news to good news. I told you, number two, it is the gigashites. Now, the word gigashites, as I, saw, I spoke to you, it deals with the pride and the manipulation. Pride and manipulation. Yes, sir. The gigashites, there were people who had influence, power, and they would manipulate, which in um, secular language is politics. Wow. And God said, I'm going to raise up political prophets. Wow. Hey. I will raise up people political in government. Prophets. In leadership, in corridors of power, God is going to put up his own people. That's number two. <laughs> Political prophets or, or governmental prophets or people in positions strategically. You will see some mayors, how God is going to use them to advance the kingdom agenda. <laughs> if these are not conquered, you will see God's children if they apply for a tender, if these positions are not conquered, if they apply for anything, the devil uses them to reject everything. Everything the church loses. The devil says, no, 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 don't give that woman. Give that person. The devil is advancing his agenda right now in the world. But God told me, he said, right now, he said, I'm going to use even them. And they will not know I'm using them. But I'm going to use political positions and I'll even raise up people in positions and some I will use them without even them knowing my but God. they shall be my people. my people I shall put my spirit upon them the way I did with the Babylon <laughs> and they shall carry my plan Woo! and I shall oh, yeah, my toy, I, I shall advance my kingdom I shall move my agenda the somebody say yes 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 major yes. major this is powerful I'm not preaching <laughs> I am prophesying this is an oracle. God is speaking. You see, the church will be so surprised oracle. how how even the government people that you are not even connected to, how they'll just be willing to give tenders, projects to the people of God. Powerful. And you'll be surprised. But when you shall see this thing, do not be surprised. God is about to advance his nation. And he needs millions and millions and billions shall be transferred to the church. And the gates of hell Some shall not, not prevail. prevail. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. The gates of hell shall not prevail. Hallelujah. The church is taking over. You'll be surprised how people get jobs. The house of God is taking over. Some will not even apply for the jobs. Jesus is taking over. God Somebody say, I hear you, prophet. I hear you, prophet. Mm. I'm all right. I'm all right now. <laughs> It represents humanism. Humanism. You see where people are so logical. Okay. And God said, I will raise up educational pro uh, prophets. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Educational <laughs> prophets. Oh, yes. This is powerful. Acts 7 verse 22. Check it out. Acts 7 verse 22. God is going to raise up educational prophets. Mato Sakaya Mande Redia. And Moses. I'm telling was learned. You, I'll stop even there. <laughs> How was Moses? Moses was well learned in all wisdom mm -hmm. yes. of the Egyptians. All right, just stop over there. This is what is going to happen. Let me, let me just say this to you. God said to me, said, right now, I'm going to raise up people who will be very learned. It says Moses was very educated. Now, read that verse. It says he was very educated. It says in all the wisdom of the Egyptians... 
Do you understand? My God. It says, was mighty in words and in, in deeds. The man, hey, hear me, hear me. The reason why Moses conquered them, you know, the Bible says the man was so much learned. He well understood. Learned. There are people God is going to give them wisdom and idea in a certain area. Uh, he didn't understand, he just said to you. Glorious. There will be people who have wisdom Glorious. in how to handle the church. There are people who don't have wisdom in how to run businesses. How to create a company. How to advance. They will be pro and they will not understand how. And they will not know why. But it is the divine will. God is going to raise up educational prophets. They, they will even teach others how to do it. They will provide education. They will teach people how to, to invade in technology. And they will even learn. They will teach other people how to do it. So this is how I did it. Educational prophets. And the people will learn from them. And they'll be like, uh, how do you do it? They'll be able to explain to people, this is how I did it. I invested in this way. I did it in this way. They'll be educational prophets. They'll rise up to conquer the spirit of humanism. And when these people rise, it will not be I did it. They will say the Lord did it. They'll give the glory to the Lord. For the Lord is about to conquer the spirit of humanism. Somebody say, yes, my prophet. Yes, my prophet. Wow. In Daniel chapter 1 verse 17. Wow. Don't just hear these people you read in the Bible. Wow. The Bible says, hmm, let me just show you something. Daniel chapter 1 verse number 17. Mm. And for these four children, mm. God gave them knowledge and skill Ma, suta, in all learning and wisdom. Ma, in all what? In all learning and in what? And wisdom. They had knowledge and Daniel skill. had an understanding. In all visions and all dreams. He says, this young four men. He says, this four young men. He says, how they were doing things. You know, when you are playing football, there's a difference between your brother who plays soccer and Ronaldo. No, I know your brother plays soccer very well. But I'm saying there's a difference. They all play soccer. The difference is skill. So the difference that is gonna, God is going to put upon the church, upon the people, and just the world, is how you're going to do it. We're going to do things with the skill. Now you didn't hear me. The same thing they are doing, we're going to do it with what? I'm trying to talk to prophesy. You see, somebody thinks, oh, he's preaching. I'm not. This is an oracle. God is speaking today. This is what is going to happen from now onwards. God told me, he said, he said, he said, he said, I am done. He said, I was establishing you. I was establishing you. And he said to me, he said, right now this in the second phase. He said, beauty me an altar. And I went on the mountain. I put up stones together. He said, call this altar El Bethel. He said, because I am God of this house. I am God of this nation. I am God of this nation. I am God of this house. He says, I will exalt my name once again. Somebody shout yes. A new dispensation. So when you think, when you are there in your house praying, Father, I am praying. Lord, I pray for the healing. Hey, God is going to heal you because he has got a plan with you for the nation agenda. National plan. He has got a nation. There is a kingdom agenda. Kingdom agenda. So when you want to be healed, it's not just to be healed like that. No. Mm -mm. The Bible says these women who Jesus had cast out the demons, he said they saved Jesus with their, with their substance. Own resources. Amen. The Bible says, and Moses was well learned. Well learned. Very well learned. He understood all what the Egyptians were doing. He understood it. God is raising up people in government, in all circles, in government positions. Who conquer uh, uh, migration? Political prophets. There'll be political prophets. Educational and God prophets. is also raising up educational prophets. Financial prophets. People who rise up. 
and 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 they will know they will lead the church they will lead the ministry they will stand out they will, in what they're doing it will be to the glory of god Amen. they will conquer the amorites now i want you to, to, to read the last one in uh, deuteronomy 7 verse 1 i want you to read the last one who will be conquered all right other mountains have not mentioned for a reason Okay, but I want us to look at the last one. And the what? The Jebusites. The it says, and the Jebusites. Yes, the Jebusites. It says, when we are dealing with the Jebusites, we deal with the people who were having their own mountain. Okay. And they were a representation of rejection. There were people who actually were staying in isolation. Okay. People who their homes were broken. Okay. Ah, any person who is divorced was going into this mountain. Mm, you didn't hear me. And he was staying with the Jebusites. Okay. They represent a spirit of rejection. And God said, if you will be conquering, he said, conquer that mountain as well. He said, take over it. My God. And God is going to raise up this, <laughs> the last group of prophets, yes. the family prophets, who shall conquer the spirit of rejection. Family. There will be family prophets rising up. Yes. Prophetic families, prophetic homes. Yes. Listen, what I'm telling you right now about God's universal plan that he is about to do, it will not happen if families are broken. There are some certain people who are believing God for prophetic marriages. God will bring prophetic husbands, prophetic wives, prophetic marriages. People will not understand them. But this is God's will. And when God will raise them up, it is what God is having. It's not about to do with you. But it's God's plan. And he's going to raise up these families. And they will stand. There will be a representation of the word of God. And people when they shall see these families. They shall bow down and glorify God who is in heaven. There are families that God is going to raise up. And the spirit of rejection shall be cast out. And when God was telling Moses, when God was telling Joshua, he didn't say spare this mountain. He said this mountain is very strategic. It must be conquered. Where there's rejection, it must be conquered. Where there are broken homes, it must be conquered. Where there are misunderstandings, it must be conquered. Where there are no families, it must be conquered. Where there are problems in marriages, it must be conquered. God will not spare this sign. I am seeing family prophets, prophetic homes, prophetic marriages, prophetic families. God is going to do this. Somebody shout hallelujah. So when you see people right now speaking of, I am having Family issues, prophets. I'm having problems, oh, this is happening this way, I know where it's coming from. Oh my God. There is a Jebusite spirit. The spirit of rejection. That is coming. And where people, you see, from nowhere, somebody feels rejected. Mm. Ah, a couple. Just he, just, he just feels rejected. Or she feels rejected. You are dealing with the Jebusite. Mm. A spirit has come. Reason. Mm. Misunderstandings. Mm. Problems in homes. Marriages. Let me tell you something. Don't worry about it. Time has come to be conquered. My God. Family Prophetic children. Will be born. <laughs> what a generation. Don't worry about your kids. They're like, oh, they're all smoking. They're what all into generation? drugs. Oh, my children. I don't know what to do with my children right now. Uh, Hear me. God's going to attend them. Yeah. God can change a stone. Yeah. Your, you, those children, you'll be surprised. They'll be number one standing for the kingdom. They'll be number one sponsoring the ministry. They shall bow and praise the name of the Lord. There is a kingdom agenda. God is going to do it. The Spirit of the Lord says, Speak to the nations. Prepare for a new beginning. Prepare for a new chapter. For thy says the Lord. Before the coming of the Messiah, 
I shall establish my kingdom. I shall build my church. There shall be no one from the north, no one from the south, no one from the east, no one from the west. For there shall be one. It shall be called my nation. It shall be called my nation. That says the speak of the Lord. I shall raise my people and I shall give them strength and splendor. Somebody shout hallelujah. Now my soul, take it back. Kingdom agenda. Divine assignment of God. Raise up your hands wherever you are. Hallelujah. Any person believing God. Be that I will be among this. You see, when we see deliverance taking place, you, when we are Christ. casting out demons, yeah. it is not for individuals to benefit. No, but we are casting out God. demons from the house of the Lord, for it is written, My house is not a den of thieves. My house, it is a house, house of, prayer. of prayer. The reason why we come and cast out demons and command demons to come out, it is for the kingdom agenda. God is cleaning his church. God is cleaning his church. There is something great that is going to invade the earth. There will be, there will be no one who will not understand it. From the great to the youngest, they shall say, what is going on? It shall not be the will of humans. It shall not be the will of people. It shall be the will of God. There are people that God is pressing in different strategic places. In strategic nations. What's happening right now? If coronavirus was able to shake the whole world within a few days, what more the church? My God. I said if coronavirus turn around events. My God. Makataya Bahaza. The whole world, how things have been governed Jesus is, is by coronavirus. If coronavirus was able to do that to all nations, the church, hear me, the church is about to turn around events. God, is God said, prepare for the way of the Lord. Raise up your hands. It's not about me, it's not about you, it's about the kingdom. The nation of God. He will be healed because God wants you in the kingdom. The nation of God. They will be healed because God wants them in the kingdom. Kingdom agenda. They will be delivered because God wants them in the kingdom. Many churches right now. The Lord is speaking. God is going to give them knowledge of what I'm saying. God is speaking. God is going to open up the church. The prophecy which was given by Isaiah. Yes, sir. Shall come to pass. My God. Which says arise. Arise. The prophecy which was given by Moses and the prophecy which was given by many prophets, including Paul, shall come to pass. Which says, wake up you who sleep. Many people are sleeping. God has got a kingdom agenda, a national agenda. He has got a nation. Kingdom agenda. He will not deliver you out of Egypt alone. He says the whole nation. God is looking at a nation. His nation. The Lord is speaking. 